Provident Healthcare Partners is a healthcare investment bank that is focused on transaction advisory services. We created this podcast for healthcare executives, entrepreneurs, shareholders, and providers who are interested in learning more about the world of healthcare consolidation. Uh, welcome to this podcast. Um, my name is Justin Hand. I'm uh, Managing Director with Provident Healthcare Partners. Um, in today's episode, we are going to talk about the benefits of engaging an investment bank as organizations explore different options for their practice, their healthcare company, or their organization. Um, as, a, as an investment banker, I've spent 15 years in and around the healthcare industry, and I'm joined by several colleagues of mine. I'm AJ Shaker. Uh, I've been in investment banking for six years. Eric Major, also been in investment banking for six years, focused within the healthcare industry. As we thought about this topic for business owners, um, we decided to segment it into really three areas. Uh, One, the first being, what is the benefit of starting dialogue with many different investment banks with experience in transaction services? Uh, The second is, at what point should a business start to think about engaging in a formal fashion a business to represent their organization? And third, what is really the benefits of having a third party agent through a process uh, managing um, the relationships that the relationships and time that go into finalizing a transaction? Um, Many organizations or many business owners don't actually even have a a strong understanding of what investment banking is. So names like Goldman Sachs or JP Morgan are companies that people know by name. Uh, They're very multifaceted, manage a lot of the different areas of investment banking services. In this podcast, we're going to focus more around mergers and acquisitions specifically, which is our expertise and really where in lower middle market of healthcare, most most organizations fall. Yeah, I'd say that, you know, the major um, things just from a descriptive standpoint that an investment bank does is, um, you know, again, it can be as multifaceted as doing initial public offerings, sales and trading. Um, equity research and covering publicly held uh, stocks and reporting to investors on their opinion of those investments over time. Uh, Like Justin mentioned, what our focus is, is really on the merger and acquisition advisory side of things in that um, we're advising healthcare companies as they think about either uh, selling their organization to a larger company or bringing in a private equity investor to help uh, invest into various growth avenues. And when we think about business owners who aren't familiar with uh, the investment landscape, there are several different ways that they can educate themselves on uh, what options are out there, who are doing transactions, what are the motivations for doing transactions. And in our opinion, having uh, a third party agent who's really there from an advisory standpoint helps in understanding what's going on within the local market. And in several situations, it helps to have uh, dialogue with investment banks just about what's going on in the market, even well ahead of formally thinking about selling your organization or bringing in a private equity investor. And the reasons why our uh, investment bank is typically very in- integrated into uh, the sentiment of investors and buyers across a given subsector. Uh, For us, it's healthcare services. We're constantly talking to uh, private equity firms, strategic organizations that are making acquisitions on a daily basis. And um, we have a lot of information and knowledge like other investment banks in broadcasting that information to privately held businesses in terms of who is interested in making investments and who's interested in making uh, acquisitions and for what reasons. And this can really be divvied up into a number of different subsectors. It can be you know, business services, it can be IT, uh, it can be within healthcare services, even things like physician services or pharmacy uh, or home health. And uh, having someone who can essentially give you a you know, nuanced understanding of what's going on in terms of the interest levels and the potential transaction strategies out there uh, tends to be you know, a great free educational lesson for uh, business owners who may or may not have made up their mind as to whether or not they'd like to do a deal. And I think, as you mentioned, it, it really starts with education. You know, I, I think for any business owner, no matter what you know, stage of their careers that they're in or how new or, or established the company is, I think it's important to understand what's going on around them from a you know consolidation and an investment standpoint, especially within the healthcare industry where we're seeing so much change, you know, over the last decade, 
you know, the market has, has, has changed dramatically. Obviously, there's been a lot of, um, you know, changes from a regulatory perspective. And, you know, it's important for business owners to really understand why are groups in, you know, going through transactions, even if that's not a, you know, something that's right on their mind or something they're looking to do right away. Uh, as Eric had mentioned, gaining information and knowledge base is typically where uh, investment banks come in to be really helpful. So this, the, where you start to be introduced to these firms is through uh, legal firms, um, CPA firms that you may use on the external side, conferences. Uh, oftentimes, investment banks are attending conferences and often completely willing to share their experiences as they start to hopefully develop relationships with business owners. So the earlier you can start to gain uh, a, a the generic understanding in the beginning and then build upon that over time. I think it ultimately, in particular, when you're dealing with large shareholder bases, there's a, a, a more solid foundation to have a, a education around driving why a value of an investment bank and really an understanding of what's driving transactions in healthcare. Yeah, and I, I can say anecdotally that sometimes discussions with an investment bank can go on for you know, two, three, four, five years sometimes, just as the company continues to refine its approach, it continues to settle under growth strategies, maybe just the shareholders for them, it's not the right time to do a transaction just yet. But at least having that sense from an outside third party that's really monitoring the activity within the market from a day to day perspective, uh, gives good sense uh, to the shareholder base and to the management team as far as when the optimal time is to pursue a transaction process and really maximize value for all shareholders. Yeah, and I think the misconception that we see a lot is that you know business owners shouldn't converse with bankers or private equity firms or other groups until you know they're ready to do a transaction. But uh, I think you know a number of the the clients we've worked with in the past, you know, when we started speaking with them, you know, it wasn't a, a, a transaction wasn't an immediate consideration. But you, know, you learn a lot from you know, from what's going on within the market. I mean, we're we're talking about a lot of privately you know held uh, businesses and transactions that aren't disclosed you know publicly. And there's a lot of information that you can gain you know from investment bankers that have a good pulse on what's going on within the market. And there's a lot of benefits for a business owner to start those conversations early because while most business owners, many business owners in particular in healthcare, in particular in the physician side where we have spent a lot of time, never really thought about an exit strategy for themselves. So they have built their business oftentimes um, that have some things that could potentially be fatal flaws. And so the earlier you start to converse with experienced bankers that have managed these processes, they can actually provide free consulting, free advice in terms of what you can do to better prepare yourself for a transaction that maybe three months from now or three years from now, as AJ said, these relationships are longstanding. And so you should benefit from, uh, from, from the expertise of these firms. So once after you've gone through, hopefully after you've gone through and seen the benefits of engaging and discussing with different, different investment banks, um, it's then you reach a point as an organization because you have a good solid understanding of why transactions are happening, how it can impact your shareholders, and in the long term, how it can impact either the patients you're servicing or the the, the retail, retailers you're, you're 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 providing for in the in the event that you're on the distribution side. Then it becomes about how do you select an investment bank, and really what is the value as you're reaching that point of engaging with an investment bank. Now we've for the most part hopefully managed the educational side for your shareholder base. Now it's about what value can they bring to the table when you're reaching the point of, is this the right time for me to do a deal? And what are the potential options for my, for my firm? Yeah. And oftentimes, you know, we, we hear from clients or, or prospects that are, um, you know, already engaged in discussions with one or two buyers. And that's, you know, typically the point where they, you know, they realize that maybe we should be conversing with, you know, with M and A advisors that do this for a living, and you know, I think the the benefit, obviously, of working with an investment bank is not just necessarily, you know, how do we negotiate the best deal. It's also, you know, preparing to to go out to market because you know these transaction processes are are long, they're exhausting, you know, in many cases, and um, you want to make sure that the organization is prepared to you know to maximize value and you know close in you know an expeditious manner. Yeah, and the best way to think about an investment bank in this situation is almost we use the example of a real estate agent very frequently. If you're having, you know, a one-off discussion as a homeowner with a potential buyer of your house, uh, you can get a sense of their personality, you can get a sense of their strategy, but uh, you can't tap into necessarily the larger market of 
who all is available and potentially interested in your property, uh, nor can you get the best sense of how to position your uh, property to best take advantage of some of the trends uh, from buyer sentiment out there in the market at the same time. So, um, you know, some of the things that an investment bank can help do to prepare a company for market and, you know, optimally position the business is, um, you know, really scrubbing through the financial uh, profile of the organization, uh, trying to sh- capture all of the relevant um, add backs to EBITDA, for example, which I'm sure we'll get into in a further uh, podcast somewhere down the road. Um, it can also be to identify uh, what the proper valuation for the business could be in a broader marketing process, uh, but also identifying who the logical groups could be that could really um, solve for some of the shareholders' concerns through a transaction. If uh, the shareholders' concerns are around uh, their role in their business post-transaction, uh, if their considerations are around what the maximal value of the business could be, uh, or if it's considerations around uh, competitive aspects and not getting too close with some competitors in their backyard. Those are all things that an investment bank uh, can really solve for in terms of uh, presenting and identifying their strategy to, to go to market and uh, maximize value for your organization. As AJ said, one of the one of the most important things are one of the things that we believe many business owners don't realize is just the depth of opportunities that are available to their business. As Eric had said, a lot of our clients have actually received offers from groups or certainly have had outreach from potential suitors. The benefits of an investment bank is you get to actually explore all the different options that are available to you uh, or to your organization. But at the same time, a capable investment bank can actually narrow the, the expansiveness of this industry. And so as we talked about in an earlier podcast, um, there are a lot of different options for groups, and it's our belief and, and shared by most investment banks that you should should explore all those different options. And there's a, becomes a bandwidth issue as you step into a formal process where you have a business to run, you have patients to see if you're a physician, and it becomes a huge burden to successfully manage a process and ultimately close a transaction at what was negotiated in the LOI. And the last thing you need, last thing you want is to be is to be distracted during that process. So a third party that their sole function is to manage that on your behalf, aligning best interests, maximizing value, um, and bringing all those options to you as you make the decision if you want to step into this is is a critical part of that of that decision for your shareholders. And I think it's important. I mean, especially when we're talking about founder operated businesses you know, that have been around for 30, 40 years, you know, have grown to a size where, you know, they've never taken on outside capital, you know, maybe they've, you know, used some, some lenders to, you know, to finance some of their growth. But um, these organizations, you know, I think it's very important that this, tra- this first transaction you go through will be, you know, likely the most important you'll go through in, in your careers. And, you know, it's important not to cut corners when it comes to that. Um, I th- you know, I think with, with many of the prospects and, and clients we speak with, you know, they recognize that, you know, it doesn't make sense for us to try to streamline this process with one or two buyers where uh, potentially five years from now, you know, once the, you know, the economics of the deal kind of wear off, you know, you realize that you've entered into the wrong partnership. And it's more than just the value of, of making sure that, you know, the, the valuation you get and the cash of closing is attractive. It's also, you know, really a marriage when you look at these deals and it's making sure that, you know, five, 10 years from now, you, you can look back and say, I made the right decision, not just for the money, but for the partner that I was able to be introduced to. So the next phase of the kind of the thought process is decision process for a business owner. After you've gone through the education, after an investment bank has performed evaluation analysis for you, so you have a sense of what you could yield out of a transaction, um, should you explore it. And you have a basic understanding of what are the options for the group is what is the benefits of having an investment bank when you actually managing a process post engagement with a firm? Um, I think there is a huge misconception that if you've had discussions with a potential buyer or potential investor, that you've done a lot of the hard work. And the reality is, uh, while offers are difficult to come by, uh, the work really starts post receiving that offer. And so the benefits of an investment bank through a process which can last anywhere from on the short end, three months to the long end, a year, year and a half has been the longest that we've probably managed. 
um, is that you've got a third party that's got your best interests at heart in working towards successfully closing the right transaction. And, and we talked about education, you know, before starting our process. And the reality is that education, you know, for a deal can start years before you go through a deal, uh, certainly months before, and, you know, really continues until, you know, there's a, a closing of the transaction. Um, you know, oftentimes our clients, you know, go into a transaction process with, you know, a good understanding of what private equity is and, and why they're pursuing this. But until you you really go through a deal and you 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 choose a buyer and, and enter into diligence and close that transaction, um, there still has to be constant education that happens from third party advisors, you know, the bankers and lawyers uh, that are involved in the deal. Yeah, and it can be things as detailed. Well, I take a step back when I think the common misconception for when you receive an offer is that you get, for instance, 50 million of cash at close. Uh, there's always you know, a number of different factors that go into that. It's not only you know, how did you arrive at that $50 million valuation, um, what are the components of that between cash, stock, escrow, cap, basket. Uh, there's the due diligence that it takes to get from there to a closing of a deal, including you know, quality of earnings analysis, including uh, in healthcare especially, uh, billing and coding analysis and regulatory reviews, which for a large shareholder base uh, in many cases, or even a small tightly held shareholder base that hasn't gone through a deal process before, can be very alien terms and uh, concepts that people don't generally understand unless you've been through processes time and time again. And so the value of an investment bank, especially in the um, in the process, is to really educate the shareholders so they understand uh, all the components of the transaction, why the buying entity is considering the transaction in this way, and what the eventual outcome is for the shareholders as a result of all these various concepts and components of a deal process. Yeah, I think it's really about understanding what is you know market for you know these terms beyond you know the valuation which we'll discuss. Um, I think there's other components of offers that you know as bankers you know doing these transactions and you know many of the industries that we play in within healthcare we understand you know what where the buyer should be in terms of uh, you know market uh, for the escrow for example for you know the cap and other you know uh, terms within the LOI. Like the second area is around valuation, and, and I think it's important to think about breaking that into two. Economic value is one thing. Long-term relationship, as Eric had mentioned, these are marriages. There's tremendous and equal value to that as well. So where an investment bank or an advisor comes in is creating competition in the marketplace, um, in healthcare specifically today. Uh, there are literally hundreds and hundreds of private equity firms looking to find platform beachhead transactions uh, in healthcare services. In addition to that, there's hundreds and hundreds and thousands of firms that have already received funding from private equity firms that are out there looking to expand through acquisitions um, and bolt on acquisitions, as oftentimes you hear. Uh, and the third is we're seeing an evolution of payers uh, in health systems making acquisitions. And so the value of a firm through driving the, the, the benefits of an investment bank in terms of driving value is by creating competition between all the different parties that are going to have an interest in your group or your organization. Um, and that's, a, that's an overwhelming process for most business owners where they're thinking about, they're not even certain they want to do something because they've built something that oftentimes they think of, of, the, of their as their baby, very important to them. And so it's an emotional attachment to them. And at the same time, you're trying to, you're trying to align and assess what, that's, what that emotional baby, if you will, is worth. And so shifting that to someone else is, uh, is oftentimes a really, is, is, a, is always a benefit. Um, and so our role, competitor's role, is to bring as many different parties to the group to drive that valuation through competition. And we can talk about many, many case studies around how we're able to end up at, at valuations significantly higher than where initial offers were received or even offers received directly from a potential suitor to our client. Um, equally important to that is around what is the relationship for the long term? Uh, as I mentioned, many of the deals happening in the market today are private equity structured in nature, uh, as we've talked in previous podcasts and future ones. Um, and what that means is that you are tied into that business through through re retaining equity in the organization and being a shareholder in the business. And so it is still like a marriage post-transaction, uh, even though you may have sold 70, 80, 90% of the equity, or even 100% of the equity if it's a, an outright sale with a strategic acquirer. And so finding that best partner, finding that right fit for yourselves as a seller, your employees that work for you and help you create this business, the patients that you're servicing, 
uh, or, the, or the, the end user that you're providing products or drugs to is very important to most business owners. Um, and we, we believe that this tremendous amount of value uh, in a firm like ours coming in and trying to match those, uh, those, those principles that are important to business owners to potential suitors that are coming in at high valuations, but also great philosophical and strategic fits for the business. Many of our clients understand, uh, you know, the consolidators in their individual industries, you know, and they typically have, you know, experience speaking with them or, or know other, you know, providers within their industry that have gone through transactions with those groups. You know, I th- the other really side of the equation on the private equity side, I think, is is very unknown to many of our clients. And you know, as investment bankers, you know, especially focus in healthcare, you know, we understand these private equity firms. We know their past experiences. You know, we've closed transactions with you know dozens of of different private equity investors. And you know, I, our job is really to align our our clients. Um, you know. From a philosophical perspective, certainly, and also bringing in groups that we we truly believe will be able to provide value beyond just capital, which in today's market is you know a commodity that's very easy to find. Yep. And I think the interview process that happens within an investment banking led process really helps our clients determine what path they'd like to go down and what path is best for themselves and their business. At the end of the day, we've been through many situations where clients entered into a process thinking that they wanted to sell their business outright, they wanted to transition to another business venture or simply retire and step away from the business. But going through the transaction process, speaking with, you know, call it a dozen different groups, mix of private equity and strategic, um, and hearing their philosophies about healthcare, hearing their philosophies about business operations, but also their future growth outlook for the business has really allowed several of our clients in the past to reshape the way that they thought about a partnership moving forward. Instead of selling 100% uh, and stepping away from the business, there's been clients that have really been motivated and energized by the value a private equity firm could bring in terms of uh, doing add-on acquisitions, investing into the additional management team within that organization, uh, and really creating a next you know, robust player within uh, that given specialty. And what we found over time is that that interview process where folks have been most well aligned with the private equity group or the strategic group from the philosophical standpoint has really created the highest valuation for themselves at the end of the day, which uh, wouldn't be possible unless you explored a number of different options in order to get to that eventual partner and eventual deal structure that's best for everyone. So the last kind of part to uh, the last thing around being a benefit of having an investment bank is, is a part of this process is really around how do you manage the closing of a transaction after you've identified a good suitor, uh, we've, we've collectively negotiated a premium valuation for your business, uh, and now it's about actually executing and closing this transaction. Um, the diligence process is always fatiguing. Uh, it's always overwhelming for business owners. And the benefits of a firm like ours is hopefully we can shift the significant burden away from the business owner to us or to a competitor of ours to manage this on your behalf. We're experts at closing deals. Now it's about how do you actually get to the finish line here for the business. And so every buyer, whether it's private equity or a strategic acquirer, is going to come in and really do three areas of diligence. Uh, the first is operational. It's how is the business run? How is it going to continue to run? And how will it grow in the future with an alignment with the, the group that you selected as your partner? Um, the second is uh, financial diligence. Um, is the performance of the business Um, what was portrayed in what's known as a confidential information memorandum or all of the previous information that was provided to this potential suitor during the marketing process. Um, Is the business sustainable? Is it going to continue to grow at at the rates in which um, it has historically? Are there risks associated with the financial performance of the business? Um, The third is clinical. Um, How, uh, from a basic perspective, bringing in a third party to review the clinical Uh, practices of the business, is there anything that could be viewed as questionable from a reimbursement perspective, Uh, questionable in the way in which we see patients or bill patients, all of that is captured in a clinical review. Uh, And the final and probably the most daunting for for groups is the legal review. So obviously, as you you are managing through a process uh, and you're closing a transaction, there's a tremendous amount of legal work that goes into uh, and a tremendous amount of negotiation that goes into the legal documentations around structure of these of these deals uh, to ensure that not only um, are you protected appropriately from 
uh, pre-closing issues, but also as an equity owner, uh, post-close in many of these instances, um, are you protected as a, as a business owner going forward? And so having a firm like ours manage that on your behalf uh, is extremely helpful because that's where we're experts at, at managing. Uh, it's oftentimes totally new concepts for business owners having not done this before. Um, and it takes a tremendous amount of work to, to manage those four verticals as you manage through a diligence process, all the while also trying to maintain the growth of a business and manage, uh, manage the organization. Yeah, I'd say a big concern for many CEOs and shareholders of businesses is that they enter into a due diligence arrangement and the acquiring party is simply in it to learn as much as possible without ultimately wanting to close the deal. Um, I'd say that there is uh, a benefit to an investment bank in that we've gone through dozens and dozens of diligence processes in the past where we can identify what is a market ask for diligence information and what isn't. We can also have a significant amount of leverage in terms of the length of time it takes to complete a due diligence process at the same time. If things are dragging on and there doesn't seem to be an incentive from uh, the buyer to ultimately close the deal, because we went through a process and we interviewed half a dozen other uh, organizations that were at a very compelling valuation than the group that was at the table currently, you know, we have that backup plan if necessary and negotiating leverage in order to get the transaction done. So uh, I'd say you know, that not only happens from a strategy perspective, but also in terms of managing the administrative side of uh, data room management, as well as fulfilling information requests, having a third party that is experienced in pulling the requisite information, analyzing the information in a way that's digestible to uh, the private equity firms, third party uh, diligence sources really helps us keep up that efficient timeline towards a closing of a transaction. And I think the reality is that you know not every deal that goes into, dil into due diligence closes. And um, investment bankers that say they close 100% of their transactions are, are certainly not being truthful because you know, in the middle market or lower middle market of healthcare, um, you know, groups have never gone through the extensive diligence process if this is their first transaction that, you know, a private equity firm and their third parties will perform on the business. And, um, you know, there's, I would say most of our transactions, there's issues to work through. You're not just legal issues that, you know, certainly legal counsel, strong legal counsel will, will aid and, and lead the discussion on, um, but mostly business issues that come up in negotiating the documents that, you know, need, need third parties to you know, interact with the buyer. And, you know, to some extent as a, you know, as a seller and as an organization that's, that's, you know, partnering with someone, you don't want to be the ones leading those negotiations with, you know, the buyer directly, because, you know, what does that relationship look like after, you know, 90 to 120 days of due diligence? You know, is that relationship still as exciting as it was when you were, you know, signing that letter of intent? If you've spent the last, you know, 90 to 120 days negotiating with the with the buyer, so you know, our role in the process is really, you know, insulating our clients from those negotiations, so that when the deal closes, you know, there's no hard feelings. People can move on and and, and you know, and, and, and act on that partnership and the 100 day plan that they put together. So at the at, as we're approaching the end of the of a process and the conclusion of a, of a diligence phase, uh, it's interesting that it's somewhat anticlimactic typically the day you do you close a transaction. Uh, gone are the days of all having to be together in a room and signing papers in person. Um, everything tends to be very electronic in fashion. People tend to close transactions in their offices uh, and then move on to managing the day-to-day -day operations of the business and, and moving forward. Um, Hopefully, we gave you a good sense of the value of an investment bank and thinking about kind of the stages of which you should, should consider um, starting to educate yourselves around it, the benefits of driving value in a process, uh, and ultimately managing that close of a transaction once you've made the decision to uh, transact. Um, much like picking a partner when you're selling your business, it's equally important to pick the right investment bank that's a good match for your business from a personality standpoint. We collectively spend a lot of time with our clients, uh, thousands of hours as described in person, over the phone, electronically. Um, you want to make sure you're, you're aligning with someone that works you work well with, uh, but more importantly, that can speak to having closed transactions in your specific industry or something with uh, very comparable transactions, has the relationships with uh, the community of, of private equity firms or buyers that are going to have an interest in doing this transaction and that you would have an interest in doing the, the transaction with. Um, that have references and past clients that speak to the value created through their relationships 
and through the investment bank really coming to understand what's driving their business and the growth in the future in their business to extrapolate as much value as possible. Um, and ultimately, that's hopefully that's going to get that deal closed on your behalf. Uh, so we hope you enjoyed the session. Um, look forward to having you join others in the future. Again, my name's Justin Hand. I'm AJ Shaker. And I'm Eric Major. Thank you all for listening.